But now, Tory MP Andrew Rosendahl is here for the uncancelled interview. And Mr. Rosendahl was returned as the MP for Romford last week, defying the exit poll that wrongly projected the local legend would lose his seat. But Reform UK did surge to third place, making it a tight run thing. So where to now for the Conservative Party? And is he tempted to defect to Nigel Farage's team? Andrew, it's great to have you on Outspoken. That was a tight result last week. Did Reform UK ever try and get you to cross the floor to join their (laughs) movement? Well, I think that in Romford, most people agreed with my political point of view, which was very similar to reform on most issues, not on everything, but on most issues, I think that reform and myself have very similar point of view. And I think it was it was possible to win people back. A lot of people were going reform. I had a lower share of the vote for reform than my neighbouring seats, 21 percent next door had 28 percent. So I think a lot of reform voters knew that by voting for me, they were getting a similar similar style of politics. So I think they were more comfortable in voting for me. But yes, you're right. The exit poll did look like I could lose the seat, but I proved them wrong. Yeah. Were you freaking out? No, no, I wasn't. I actually believed I would win all the way through because I am local, I did the work, everyone knew me. And although they weren't happy with the government, a lot of people were saying, I'm going to vote for you, Andrew. So I expected to get a a better result than the opinion poll showed. And sure enough, I bucked the trend once again. So before the election, Andrew, had Richard Tice or Nigel Farage reached out to you at all? Or anyone from before? So I speak to Nigel quite regularly. I see Nigel uh, quite a lot. I chat to him. We're always on good terms. But they've never once asked me to join reform. And I think they know that all my life I've been committed to the Conservative Party and I wouldn't join another party. I wouldn't feel it would be honourable to do that. I think for me, it's about what you believe in. And a political party is a vehicle to fight for the things you stand for. And I've always believed the Conservative Party is the best vehicle to get the right things for our country. But I'm bitterly disappointed that the last five years that didn't happen. We had an 80 seat majority. We were given the huge support by the British people and yet we squandered it. We could have done so much. We could have completely ripped up so much of what Tony Blair's Labour government did in the 2000s, but we didn't do it. We sat on our laurels and, you know, we didn't really make the radical change that I think we needed to do. So my view is that we've got to make sure this is a one-term Labour government. And if it's a one-term Labour government, it's a bit like between 74 and 79, we come back, as Mrs Thatcher did in 79, with a majority to do radical things Mm. and change the country for the better. Okay, I'll sign up to that because I think it's very possible for there to be a one-term Labour government. Their vote was soft, their vote share was lower than that achieved by Jeremy Corbyn. Reform UK was second in nearly 100 seats. So I actually firmly believe this will be a one-term government. But the problem you've got, Andrew, is that you need a Mrs. Thatcher-like figure in order to save your party, which is descending at the moment into civil war. And you've got these two camps, right? So you know both these women well. On one side, you've got Suella Braverman, who is open to Nigel Farage, who is open to doing a deal with reform and who is, I would say, politically closer to where reform is at. Then you have Kemi Badenoch, who is still considered uh, an MP on the right of the party, I guess, more the centre-right. But she is vociferously opposed to the idea of any sort of deal with Reform UK. And she's actually been pretty personally negative about Nigel Farage. So who are you with? I don't agree with her position at all. I think that it's... Kemi. Yes, Kemi's position. It's hugely mistaken. The fact is that, you know, more than four million people voted for reform. And I think the vast majority of those people are conservative voters who voted for us in 2019, but were terribly disappointed, as I was and I knew you were, that the previous government just didn't match up to expectations. So to discard those people to just discard what Nigel's been saying, what reforms stand for, is a mistake. Actually, we need to 
occupy their ground. Uh, we have created a vacuum to the to the right of us. And of course, that's taken now by reform. So I don't believe there's any hope of their being a conservative victory in the next election unless we bring those people back on side. It's pure mathematics. You can't have two conservative mm. parties or two right of centre parties okay. under our electoral system because Labour yeah. will always win. But then to do that, you've got to do a deal with Nigel. So, so what do you want? Do you want him in the party? Could could Nigel Farage be the leader of the Conservative Party, maybe a reformed Conservative Party? Look, anything that happen in the next four to five years, the imperative, I believe, is to put the interests of our country first. And what I absolutely determined to ensure is that we don't have decades of socialist government. So the Conservative Party mm. has to think of the interests of the entire nation. If we can somehow work out a plan that will knock Labour out in four to five years time and stop the damage that years of socialism will do to our country. That's our duty to do that. So mm. we've got to work out a plan. Now, at the moment, of course, things are very raw after the election. We need to rebuild. We need to choose a new leader. We need to think about what we are and where we're going. We need to get over those hurdles first. But in the long term, as we get towards the next election in three, four, five years time, all options should be on the table. I don't think we should rule anything out at this stage. But one thing is certain, we can never win an election again unless we unite the right, unless the right of centre of British politics comes together under our electoral system. We are looking at Labour victory again and again and again. That is something we have to avoid. So what did you make of Kemi Badenoch? saying that she thought Suala Braverman was having a very public nervous breakdown. I I don't think that's true. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's the kind of thing we should be saying about colleagues. I had a meeting with Suella yesterday. I speak to her all the time. Uh, she knows exactly what she believes in. She knows what she stands for. She's a very reasonable person. I, I think these people that are attacking Suella, maybe they're afraid of her, I don't know, but it's wrong to do that. You know, I also had a long meeting with Priti Patel yesterday. She's another strong lady who I think has a lot to offer our party. Yeah. I speak to Robert Jenrick. Look, we've got good people. We need to come together as a party. I don't want the party to split, but we do need to have a clear vision for the future. We can't be all things to all men. We can't occupy some wishy-washy middle ground that no one understands what we're for. The success of Margaret Thatcher, who's here with me in the room, you can see the, <laughs> the pictures also behind me. There's lovely lots of Margaret Thatcher pictures in my office. Uh, so she, she's always looking, looking down on me and helping me to guide me through things. Look, she, everyone knew what she stood for. People didn't always agree with her. And yes, she divided people. But they respected her because she stood up for Britain. She stood up for what she believed to be right. And even those who didn't always agree with her had huge respect. Now, that's the kind of leadership we need again. I don't want a leader that tries to be all things to all men. I don't want another technocrat, another administrator who tries to steady the ship all the time, but has no strong, clear vision for our country. So we do have good potential leaders. And I hope we get someone who will not only uh, unite our party, but unite the right of centre mm. across the country. And that may mean having discussions with reform, with Nigel. It might mean bringing us all together in some way in the future. I don't know. But we shouldn't rule anything out at this stage. Isn't the risk, though, Andrew, that the right of your party might be split between various candidates? Because you mentioned Priti Patel, another great woman. My understanding is that she's running. Suella is clearly running, as is Robert Jenrick. I mean, who are you going to back out of those three? Because you've got to unite around one true candidate of the right, don't you? One of those three has to be on the ballot. Yeah, look, I mean, it's an exhaustive ballot. The leadership election isn't going to be till later in the year. I think things will change, they'll emerge. I'm in discussions with three of the leadership candidates, potentially others. Uh, you know where I stand, Dan. You know, I'm very much on the Suella, pretty wing of the party. Uh, you know, and I'm, I want to see a clear vision for our country. And I, I see that those two strong ladies, they have 
they do have that vision. And I, I think one of them, or possibly Robert Jenrick, let's see how things develop. I mean, at the moment, there's so much to be sorted out. It's not just about policy either. It's about party organisation. We need root and branch change of the way the party operates. We need fundamental reform of how the central office operates. We need to be a grassroots party again. We shouldn't be some corporate organisation governing from on high. We need to be grassroots up, not top down. So I have very strong views about how we try to reform our party to make it relevant to the ordinary man and woman in the street. Because at the moment, you know, we're too distant and we're not the community campaigning isn't happening in the way that it should be. And I've developed my own way of doing it in Romford, which is why I bucked the trend in most elections. Uh, my seat was the first Tory gain after Blair won in 97. And we bucked the trend again this time, despite the exit poll predicting almost certain defeat. Uh, and I think that we need to look at each constituency individually rather than have this sort of like common uh, common sort of themes and common uh, designs of things. I think we need to be more bespoke and target areas based on what works in those communities. And that's something we're not doing. Very good point. And I think uh, you've got some sensible ideas about how to reunite the right. I hope they are listened to and it is brilliant to have you on Outspoken for the first time, Andrew Rosendell, the re-elected Romford MP. Have a great weekend.